Can you tell us about the background to the company and the division that you're in? Yeah, so I work for um, Orange, which is owned by France Telecom. Um, France Telecom is a company based in Europe, um, based out of France and with offices in the UK in terms of the, the France Telecom company. Uh, we have customers, well, we have cust over 180 million customers across Europe um, and across the, um, globally. Um, we are in 30 countries and we have, in 2008, we had revenues of over £50 billion. Uh, we provide communication services to our customers, whether that be mobile phones, whether that be broadband, mobile broadband or fixed broadband, uh, and in some countries even extends out to IPTV. So a real range of communication products um, that we offer to our customers. Why is customer retention so important to Orange? So for us in Orange, um, customers are really at the heart of everything we do. Um, Customers are the people that drive our business. Um, they're the people who buy our products and services, um, and therefore they have to be at the heart of, of everything we do. Um, so therefore, when we look at retention, we need to think about how we can retain our existing customer base. Um, traditionally in, in Telco, um, there's al always been a focus on acquisition and how we bring new customers into the company. Um, but what we've started to do, and across all telcos really, have started to look at not just cust new customers and acquisition, but our existing customers and how do we look at loyalty and retention um, of our existing customer base to ensure that actually we look after the customers that we've already got within our, within our base and hence why um, retention is, is so important to us in Orange. How does customer retention differ across markets in Europe? In some instances, as a strategy, I don't think it really does differ. I think at a high level, um, every country across Europe wants to maintain their existing customer base, wants to look after their customers, and wants to keep their customers satisfied and engaged with Orange as a brand. Um, where it does differ is when you start to get into either local market issues, um, local competitive issues, the, the, the state at which um, we've reached mobile saturation, um, customer behaviour or potentially local implementation of marketing strategies. So as a strategy, it doesn't change, but what will change is something like um, involuntary churn, for example. So involuntary churn is where a customer leaves Orange as a, as a business because they're um, not paying their bills, for example. So that would be what we would term involuntary churn. Um, now, that differs across Europe based on the economic climate, how badly a country has been impacted by the recession, etc. Um, and therefore the strategies that we deploy to um, improve involuntary churn would be slightly different and need to be tailored towards that specific market. What cultural, contextual and market-based factors account for this difference in retention in different markets, do you think? So if we take the example of involuntary churn, um, this is very much, well, initially it, it looks at, at culture um, because the culture of, of a country will very much drive the, the customer behaviour um, and how important it is to that country to um, either be in debt or not be in debt. Um, so if you look at um, the UK, for example, um, we are a culture where we're, we're quite used to being in debt from the point at which you go to university then throughout life, it's, it's not an uncommon thing to have a, you know, a large debt for your student fees or for your mortgage, etc. And therefore, it's a lot more um, acceptable to have um, a debt or to have payments that, that haven't been paid. You compare that to a country like France or Germany, for example, where it's generally a lot more um, frowned upon to have debt. And those countries, and because of the culture of those countries, would therefore be much less likely um, to have to have debt and to, to not be paying their bills because of the, the culture. Um, you then also combine that with the economic situation um, and the differences that we've had across Europe. And we all know that we've been um, particularly badly hit in, in the UK. Um, Spain and countries like Romania have also been particularly badly hit by the, the recession. Um, those countries are much more likely to have involuntary churn issues and, and debt problems than countries like France, for example, who are actually in a, a better position um, coming out of the recession and weren't as badly hit by the recession as, as some of the other countries in Europe. Can you describe the problem that you outlined in the case insights? Sure. Um, so the problem that we've outlined in the, in the case is um, really how we start to look at retention, not just at the end of a customer journey with us, um, but really from day one. 
So how do we make sure that we're actually looking at keeping all of our customers engaged with us through loyalty strategies? Um, and how do we look at how we proactively retain a customer um, from day one of their, their time with Orange? So if they've had a bit bad experience um, on their second day of joining, for example, what are we doing to address that experience and keep them engaged with us um, throughout their, their lifetime? Um, so that actually at the point where we look to retain that customer, it's much easier to do rather than waiting for all of those issues to add up and then try and address those issues at the point where we're trying to retain that customer. Can you tell me how you've developed the client retention policy for welcome, grow and keep in different international markets? In terms of the, the different markets that we have, so welcome is very much about at the point where somebody's acquired a new handset, for example, um, what we would then to do to introduce that customer to the market. Um, so in some countries, um, there may be no welcome strategy at all. Um, we just, with the way that, that things work at the moment, we would just um, wait for that customer to contact us. In other countries, which are a lot more sophisticated, there is a very robust welcome strategy. And we go through different ways of contacting that customer, whether that be through SMS, whether that be through calls from our call centre, um, or whether that be through some of the other tools that we have available. Um, and we will also start to look at what are the kind of messages that we send out to those customers. So do they understand their bill? Um, do they know how to use their products and services they bought? Are they the right products and services? So we'll actually start to look at how customers are using their phone and we'll also start to look at, based on the customer profile, what are the areas that they're likely to be interested in. And we'll also start to look at um, what are the common themes and queries that we have from customers and how can we be proactive in addressing that so that we can actually um, resolve customers' queries and issues before they actually become a, a problem for them. Um, so, so that's kind of two two levels in terms of the welcome side of things. Grow, um, again, grow is, is probably an area where there's been a lot of focus because once somebody's become a customer of Orange, um, we then look to, to see what we can do to um, ensure that they are happy with their, their services um, and if there's any other services that, that can be provided to, to that customer. Um, so again, that, that varies in different markets. In some markets, um, it's very much about well, it's very product driven. Um, so if a new product is launched, for example, or we want to drive a particular product, for example, fixed broadband, that would be the message that goes out to a lot of our, our customers um, and looking at our base. There's not um, very detailed targeting in terms of who, who that message goes out to. Other countries, um, again, a lot more sophisticated and there's a lot of targeting in terms of um, who's likely to want um, some of these products and services like fixed broadband, for example. Um, what's the customer's usage and is there a high usage for mobile? Is there potentially a need for fixed broadband? So that actually would become a lot more tailored um, tar and targeted in terms of when we talk to customers and at what point we tar target customers. So that the conversation we have with our customers is actually at a time when it's relevant to that customer and it's not um, driven from a business priority, but from a customer priority. Standardization versus adaptation is an age old debate in international marketing. Which approach do you think Orange uses? So I think Orange does a mix of the two. Um, I think it's a challenge that we have, certainly at a group level, is how we balance the two and how we come up with a set of global um, strategies while still recognising the local implementation. Um, so the value that we would add from a group perspective is very much looking at um, how we can share best practice, how we can um, address challenges that a number of our markets face, um, retention being one of those, um, multi-channel strategies of how they deliver retention um, being a subset of that, um, or potentially even looking at how we use insight to drive that multi-channel strategy. All of those are common themes that we have across all of our countries, um, and therefore we need to have a common strategy as to how we resolve those problems. Um, however, what we do need to think about is when we implement the strategies, um, how we do that at the different local levels um, and how we also take into account the different priorities at a local level. So whilst we may have um, a set of strategies which are applicable to all of our countries, there may be a different prioritisation of those strategies. So for some countries, it may be more important for them to focus on their multi-channel um, retention strategy. 
other channels, it may be more important for them to really look at how they drive insight um, and how they gather that insight so that they can make the right decisions about how they proactively and reactively retain their customers. Tell us about how you solved the problem in each of the different international markets. So then um, in different markets, um, again, you know, the, the problem is the same across those, those different markets. Um, in terms of how we look to, to work with different markets, a lot of that is really driven about or driven by the data that's available in those different markets. Um, so we have data across all of our markets, but some of our markets will have um, data which is very clean. Um, there's a, a lot of data available and therefore something like a propensity model um, has a much higher accuracy in terms of predicting whether somebody's likely to leave us um, as a customer. In other markets where we're not as confident about the cleanliness of that data or we don't have as much data so it's not as rich, um, we're therefore less confident about somebody's propensity to churn. Um, we can also look at how we integrate data between different systems. Um, so in some of our countries we have um, systems which are fully integrated and therefore it's very easy for us to compile one view of the customer's interactions with their propensity to leave um, and therefore build a score for their engagement. In other countries that's held in different systems and therefore it becomes a lot more complicated to make that assessment um, and therefore we need to make a number of assumptions around that to get to the, the same end goal effectively. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thank you.